two, three. Hello, I think we'll start in a second because we had some delay. However, I think we should start, yep. Um, okay, good to see you guys. Uh, I know it's the almost end of the day and you are a bit tired, probably after the a uh, lot of speeches, a lot of presentation. Uh, my presentation will be a little different because uh, I'm probably the only person here or probably in the audience as well who doesn't know how to code. I'm not a coder, I'm not a programmist, I'm not a business analyst. Uh, I am business development and this is the scope of my responsibility in the SII. However, I work with you guys. I work with our development teams, with architects, with uh, business analysts, and I try to understand and learn what's going on today in the technology, in different clients. In SRI, we have amassed more, more than 200 clients. So I check vertical by vertical. I talk with CIOs, CEOs, again, development teams, and try to copy and paste the right solutions from one company to the other company, from one vertical. Some call it a consulting, in a way. And I believe that technology runs the business, but it also works in the opposite way. So business runs the technology. And today I would like to show you one of the most effective, transparent, fastest technologies I had ever seen or I've seen since years. And it will be a story about robotics process automation and artificial intelligence. But before we dive deeper into technology, I would like to talk with you about the complexity of our world today in terms of technology. So as you probably know, all the paradigms for the last 20, 30 or 50 years disappeared. We live in a world where every company is a software company. When we have thousands of different applications, the biggest, the fastest growing companies today are the platforms. Platforms where we can distinguish who is the client, who is the employee, who is the worker, partner. So it changes everything. Today's world is a completely different world than the 50 years ago. So can you imagine, for example, that on average in a big corporation world, we use about more than 400 custom-made applications on the production. It's a lot. Half of this application are used by you or by me. So internal workforce, employees, back office, front office, not the customers. It also doesn't depend on the department. Can you imagine, for example, that in the HR department, we use more than 90, on average, 90 applications. Finance, 60. Marketing, 99. And how about people like myself, who touched all these points, because I work on the verge of finance, marketing, CRM, sales, and obviously HR, because I'm the employee of SII. How much time we have to spend in our work for clicking in these applications. And it also doesn't matter if you work in retail, financial, manufacturing, logistics, hospitality business, it doesn't matter. Again, the statistics say that in this big world, big fishes of the world, we used more than 1,000 cloud applications. So cloud doesn't work, doesn't help us. So our business or job lives is about clicking. Mundane, routine, clicking, copying and pasting different data, at least from the business perspective. Can you imagine, for example, that the business person, on average, sends about 300 emails or receives? 36 times in an hour we check the inbox. It takes about 16 mi minutes for refocusing. You know probably it's from your word. It's just switching, co switching the context. So switching from the inbox, reading the email, and getting back to the normal task. 16 minutes. It means that we lost 10 IQ points only for this reading or writing the emails. And statistics says it's an entire night's sleep. And time is precious, right? 
So what would you say if I told you that we can automate all this boring, mundane stuff? Take out the robot out of for your, from yourself, leave it for the machine or software, being more precise, and give you more time for thinking. And this is the idea of RPA, which stands for Robotics Process Automation. It's a very popular technology. It started five, at least getting popular, it started getting popular five, four years ago. But today it's so popular that we have unicorns on the market. This guy comes from Romania, from Bucharest, and uh, this is the, I think, October issue of Forbes. The valuation of the UA path, this is one of the RPA technologies, is about 7 billion US dollars today. And two years ago, the company had only 150 employees. Today it's 35, 3600. It shows you how big is the buzz about the RPA. So what is it, this RPA exactly? I'm pretty sure all of you have ever seen, touched, or even more the Excel than the macros, than the VBAs, right? So you can imagine that robot is exactly like macro in Excel, but it works with different applications. It can work with Excel, obviously, Word, Outlooks, SAP, different CRMs, everything, including mainframes, Citrix, all these black screens you use it sometimes, or the legacy applications. It's really powerful macro. Some clients perceive the RPA as a new way of integration. So it's a case when you don't need or you don't have the money to build the micro services to buy the ESB, for example, because it doesn't pay off. This is the case for the RPA. And robot is a very skilled digital worker because it can, for example, open the email, read the email, screen the PDF from the email, like the invoice. It can follow the simple, but really sometimes really uh, powerful decisions, if then. It can also connect to APIs. It can work on files and folders also in the cloud. It can extract the data. It can merge the data into different reports. It can work at night and prepare the report for the manager for the morning coffee. It can, it can also scrub the web. And it's still, the RPA is about clicking. So you don't need to learn Python or beautiful soup library to scrub the, scrub the web. Robot, it's super easy and a really accessible technology. Obviously, it, the number of implementations are is sorry, almost infinite. The second thing, which is really beautiful, and I especially like it, the money. So what would you say that we can measure the return on investment from this technology? I already told you it is super transparent. It's not like the implementing new CRM system, because the question is how much money did we save or did we get for this CR new CRM system? We don't know. It's hard to measure. With RPA, this is the root of this technology to measure what value it brings. And I will give you two examples from the SII, SII world. So as you probably know, we are the biggest IT software provider, sorry, services provider in Poland. On average, we have about 3,000 CVs received monthly. We hire 100 engineers per month on average. It's a big amount of data and work. And we measured it. How much time does it take? And it takes on average four minutes to take your CV, screen it, save it on the SharePoint, take the data to the CRM system, check if, it, if you are already applied or not. It takes four minutes. So when we multiply it times 3,000 CVs, it takes one and a half FTE. So one and a half person, let's say, to conduct this process. And putting the RPA to this, we can save 100,000 slotters. Save the money and also takes the mundane, this copy and pasting task from our recruitment department. Other example, password. 
we all forget the passwords. And even if you have the service desk applications, the solutions for that, at the end, there's always a guy. A guy who sits, waits for the ticket to change randomly the password and send it back to you. And we also measure it. It takes the whole process about four or five minutes. Again, when we multiply it by 3,000 times, we have one FTE. So imagine a guy who sits at front, in the front of the monitor, checks and waits the whole day, eight hours per day, five days per week, waits only to click the button and change the randomly, change the password. He can even he can't even imagine, you know, the new password. It's a random thing. And the money, seventy thousand zlotus saved by implementing the RPA, the robot. And we did and we do this kind of assessments for our clients. We call it the automation roadmap. So we measure every process in every department for our clients. We build a roadmap this in descending order, the processes with the return on investments ratio. So it's super transparent and you can see very clearly how much money you can save for particular processes. I hope you get the beautiful of the RPA. But there's one more thing, the AI. So what would you say if I told you that we can add some intelligence to the robot? Because robot, as I, as I told you, it's really schematic. It's like macro, right? So it goes like script. Today we are talking rather not about RPA, but about intelligent automation. So the market, we as a services provider, also software house, because SII also builds software, we try to match the RPA and the artificial intelligence in different way. But we have to debunk one myth about this artificial intelligence. I think this picture perfectly shows what is and what is in the AI. Uh, I graduated from University of Economics and I studied uh, econometrics. So I know the ropes about the statistics, econometrics, building business models, models but we have never named it as an AI. So one thing for you guys, maybe you know it, that AI is not a rocket science. It's a just a pure statistics empowered by the new computers and, and, and new, faster coding, in a way. And there's one more secret. We don't invent the wheel. So in SII and in many pr software providers, many vendors, we just use the already made APIs by this, by this big fishes, Google's, IBM's, AWS. It's super cheap. We have a knowledge for the biggest brains in the world, from Asia, from US. It's quite cheap, unless you are not the JP Morgans of the world. So we did it and we do it. So what we do for our clients, we take all these buzzwords, machine learning, cognitive, AI, we wrap it into application in the front end and a little back end, back, back end. we integrate these applications, and that's it. I want to stress to you that the technology, AI today, is a commodity, it's super accessible, it's not a rocket science, it's, it's about not having a tool, but using the tool in the proper way. So let's get back to the RPA. We are in this middle point, intelligent automations. I will show you later the, oh, <laughs> some examples uh, about, the, about how to connect the RPA with AI and build really nice solutions. But in the next years, the robot for the machine learning probably will think something, because today they are not thinking. So we are talking about, in the coming years, we are talking about visual perception, problem solving, talking with people on a really high level, so collaboration, learning, knowledge and insights. But I don't want to show you the futuristic uh, picture of the world. I, I'm really down to earth. So let's get back to the RPA and NI. One of the best examples are chatbots. Chatbots are the first wave of adoption of AI because customers want to provide the best user experience. And there's nothing better than having a chatbot, so a human being, let's say, coded, which works 24 hours, seven days a week. 
it knows almost everything, and at least more than the human. And when I use the term bot, I mean different names. Virtual assistants, intelligent assistants, digital, Watson, Alexas, chatbots, voicebots. It's the same. It's about having the service from my being Watson, for example, text to text, speech to text. It's super easy. Again, it's about using the tool, not having the tool. And I'll show you one example. This is the chatbot. I think it will run. This is the chatbot we built for the recruitment. It's for you guys. If you ever wanted to apply for the, uh, to the SIR, you can ask the chatbot, watch, front end. On the right side, there's a Blue Prism, a robotics process automation. Blue Prism waits for the question from the front end, from the bot. When it receives the question, it gets clicks in a way to our database, it sends the link for the front-end developer, Oracle, etc., etc. If it doesn't convince you how nice are the chatbots and AI, one surprise, it was made by the intern. It's not even a proof of concept. The guy did it in a two weeks, probably, or in a week, really. <laughs> so it's not on the production yet. But it shows you a glimpse how easy and how powerful can, uh, can be the AI or chatbots. Obviously, in SRI, we build the real chatbot, the big solution for one of the Scandinavian clients. We created a chatbot for the HR, so for the employees. Employees can ask how many days off they can get, where can they find the documents. Then it works like that. The chatbot understands the context, the intents, so-called intents from the user, runs the RPA, RPA connects, integrates to the SAP uh, success factors systems, clicks, 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 and return with the answer. We build different chatbots also for the procurement departments and other examples. Another example is image recognition. This is interesting, especially. So we are using the OCR technology. Again, uh, we really like Watson. We believe that IBM Watson is really intelligent, artificial intelligence. So imagine a warehouse when, where, sorry, you have uh, packages, people who pack these packages. There's obviously the CCTV, so the camera, camera systems, and probably a guy who uh, sleeps all the time and he doesn't watch the cameras. So imagine that robot can create a snapshot every second from every camera in the warehouse. Every second. It sends the snapshots to the AI and the AI was, had been already trained for the faces, faces of the employees. If the face recognized from the snapshot doesn't match the face from the database, we have the security issue. And again, it has the RPA, the robot, to send the ticket again as a security issue. And it's really interesting example. We are now in talks with one of the uh, post of big post office companies in Poland to implement this, uh, this, this idea uh, for their warehouses and for their paczkomaty. <laughs> All right. The third example is claims management. I'm pretty sure that most of you, I hope not, but probably had some small accident with a car. Today, the insurance business provides us uh, with the mobile applications. Uh, it's a called it's called self service channel. So if you have some l small scratch, you destroyed uh, half of the bumper, for example, you can take the application, take a picture of the bumper and click. And what is going on under the the knee? The application runs the robot, uh, sends the snapshot to the AI again. The AI verifies if it's the simple case, a scratch, a bumper, or the real bad case, a big accident, right? If it's a real easy case, it goes with the easy process. Easy processes are super nice because you can automate them fully. Because the amount of money also paid to you back is not big. And it's already um, done for the 
I think the third and the first uh, insurance company in Poland. So it works. And that's why you can get the, the exact number within a minute on your mobile application because it's, it's the easy process. So what I wanted to say you that possibilities of using the RPA and AI are almost endless. And I really encourage you to be open for the change to take the UA path, Blue Prism RPA, take the free of charge AIs, different services, connect them together, bring them to us, and say that, hey, I created something unique. And this is my message to you. I think we are running out of time because we have the delay. So thank you very much. I hope I inspired you in a way with the RPA. Thank you.